Hello everyone and welcome to this video where we are going to be building the rest of the Alta container ship together. Now as you could see and as you may have seen in some of the previous videos, I did have a good amount of framework already started including the cranes and systems, but as I'm going to show you they're not operational yet, most of them are just here sort of as placeholders, maybe they're visually complete, but they don't actually work for their intended feature. So we'll be doing that, but first, before that, I'm going to show you what I do have. Starting with the bridge and the actual ship itself, I did raise it up by one block, just so you have a bit more of an overhead view of the whole um, deck, as well as see over top of this gantry crane. So that is something you may or may not notice, really what happened is this just now has a one block higher ceiling, you can kind of see right here. Otherwise, same configuration in the living area. Now the cargo hold in here, you'll see a massive bay that can store up to four containers, or if you wanna have one or two, you put them here in the center in the blue area. The reason for that is so you don't end up loading it um, out of the center of gravity. So you'll have them in the blue and your center of gravity remains quite happy. So we are gonna be making this series of systems together. And then up here on the deck itself, there is, of course, this gantry crane. Right now, it's not connected to anything, but the idea behind it is this opens up and uh, can pick up a container or it folds up like this where it's not really too intrusive on the deck, right? Because you see how small that is, whereas this one here remains quite large. Uh, yes, this one also can be on rails, but the reason why it's not is because right now it's actually loaded on this point here and the reason for that is because there's a pivot so it actually lets you move around. Now the crane is the only thing that is fully operational and actually I have to thank my awesome discord moderator Zynoa123 who developed this crane or rather used the crane that I had on the Alta tanker and then kind of took it to the next level with this little cabin and stuff and then I took it from him and continued on making it, you know, fully what I want for this ship. So there is his microcontroller as well as some stuff, but these displays are fully uh, my creation. And what I did is actually you get two lift modes. You can only select one at a time. So the idea is you cannot have all, all six of these, um, or rather all eight of these uh, electric connectors active at the same time you have to have only four or four so you could only pick up the tug or only pick up the container now the tug is something that i've developed from my airplane tug except even that i took to the next level so now it has this nice little display it actually has an up and down uh, arrow keys to control the uh, transmission and of course we have to release the front connectors so it even has kind of a button system here so the beacon can actually be turned on on the display as well as the front connectors roof connectors or container connector to tow it so you can see in the back here there's these bottom connectors for towing and if we turn on the roof connectors and put the thing in park and get into the crane you'll see that if we turn on the tug uh, mode you can then lower this into place and it'll pick up the tug itself and that will be able to be placed onto the ground or land and then it'll be able to use its uh, connectors here on the rear to tow containers to the port and then you'll be able to use this massive uh, crane to pick them up then you'll be able to use the gantry crane to position it as well as lower it down in that lower deck and then from that point you have one more system and that is in here, this sort of X brace that will be able to push and rotate and move, well not rotate, push and move containers into place. So right now it's, you can see it attached itself here, we don't want that, we wanna be able to use this system to move a container all the way in here because of course the door only is in this front area. Now there's cameras, there's sensors, there's gonna be all kinds of mechanisms and things, so, we're going to get to work on that and see exactly what hopefully we can get done. The way I do see it is once these systems are done, so once the uh, 
these uh, connectors here for the containers are in place. Once the gantry crane is working and once this X brace frame is working, then it's pretty much good to go. This creation will be ready for releasing um, other than minor changes, of course. So that is going to be really nice. Now, maybe you're thinking that with this um, tug, that when you kind of load it off to the side of the ship, yeah, the ship is quite narrow and tall, so you may get some type of um, unwanted motion, let's say, and it may get rolling. But I did find that even with the rolling, there is enough systems on the underside of the ship with the propellers that I have to actually prevent it from, let's say, being too uh, bad. Of course, there is some things where you just have to sort of, um, like, use your smarts, right? You can't load the thing uh, with the kind of eccentricity and expect it to perform fully, you know? You have to use your engineer hat, I guess, is what I like to call it, and pretend that this is real life, and you kind of have to envision what would you do in real life if that was you. So now we have the tug arranged but we don't have the roof connectors on so once the roof connectors are on and move this back a little bit this should snap into place oh oh we're really off there we go so that's good and then actually what i did is i added a system on the crane where no matter what angle it's at it'll remain horizontal, so it's not gonna, even if your boom is not horizontal, the actual container will be. Now, as you can see, we do this, the ship will heavily start to list. Of course, your propellers kick on, and you can see it's even lifting the ship up. I didn't even touch ground with it, but of course, what I recommend is at that point, you lower whatever it is you're trying to drop, so whether it's a container or this little tug. And now that it's there, we ourselves can jump into it, assuming we don't glitch through the walls. And then here you'll be able to turn off your roof connectors and be on your way. So this system does work. Also, what you'll do is when you turn on the connector mode here, these bottom, these back pivots will actually rotate and that's intentional. The reason for that is to actually lift the container up just a little bit. Otherwise, this thing seems to just work kind of as the other tug, but it is a bit compacted and reduced in size, but I find it quite useful for bringing containers to the uh, ship side, and then this massive crane can then take it from there. One thing I was heavily doing is making all these displays and buttons work. I know this one isn't perfectly centered in the tug uh, as far as the top button goes, but it doesn't really bother me too much. This system is nice here, and we're going to continue that for the rest of the ship to make sure that we have the most functional and uh, high-tech system possible. So, we'll start with the actual door here. So, this door is going to slide down first, and then once it's down here, it'll slide open, and it'll sit right here underneath the deck. So, of course, as it slides under there, we got to make sure these connectors are all turned off. Otherwise, it is actually going to glitch and connect to one of these. And we can't have that. And, of course, you can't have anything on this deck if it's going to be lowered. So, we'll start with our empty microcontroller here. And there's going to be a few things that we need to put in. So, first, we're going to have the input and output of the actual door latch. So, the output is going to be the lock itself or hatch lock, and then the input is going to be the uh, lock state, or the hatch lock state. So even if we just spawn this in like that, you can see that we'll be able to put the hatch lock on the lock seal and the seal state to the seal state. So those are two kind of information nodes that we're going to be using first and foremost to make sure it's locked and unlocked as we need. Then of course we have our number output, and this is going to be going to the vertical uh, sliders. And the reason for that is, of course, to make the thing move down. And then once it's moved down, then we're going to put another output. And this is going to be the horizontal sliders. And that'll make its way across to the very front of the ship. 
Now, one thing that I did not add that may be worthwhile is to have actual, um, or to have a system that locks this thing in place once it gets to here. So I did not put that, but I kind of make it my standard operating practice to try to put those, um, what are they called? These things, the sliding tracks, and because they, they just act really nice as kind of brakes. So what I may do is check to see if this is a regular block and I see that it is. So now that it's a regular block, I could take my sliding track and place the thing up here. And since we are symmetrical, that's good. And then over here, that will have to likely be attached to something. Now we just have to note that this part follows the track. So the track itself or the slider is right above it. It's two away. All right, that two away is important to note. So with it being two away, that means when this thing comes here, this will stop and this will be two blocks away. So we presume it'll need to be over here as such. So that means between this and this, we got one, two. And over there, we're matching that system. So over here, we stop it and we got one, two. So that's just a nice, easy system that we can use to make sure that that works there. And as you could see that this this door will drop on this side, but this area remains untouched. So this won't actually get blocked or hit by anything, or at least we presume it won't. And we would we will then put a release connector node on that up here because that release connector is going to be kind of our lock, our hatch lock for our other side. So we will call this open locked um, slider. Open hatch lock slider. And we'll make sure this thing's large enough like that. And that will be an output. So this should give us our framework for everything except the actual toggle button. So that is going to be here, toggle, open, hatch. Now we probably have everything we need. First things first, I always like to organize them based on what side their uh, nodes are. So we have this and this. So now what we know, there's a couple of things. When we press the toggle, open, hatch, there's going to be a few things that happen. So we have our hatch lock. So that means we don't, we want it to be not. So if this is pressed, we want this to be unlocked, which makes sense. If we go into the game here, you can see that this button is a uh, lock seal. So if it's on, then it is in fact locked. So if we press the button, we want it to not be locked because we've pressed the button. We want the thing to be able to open. So that is number one. Then also, if the button is pressed, we have this lock slider. Now at the end over there, those things act a little different. So it's always useful to go and check exactly how they work if you don't know, but you'll see here it says release connector. So now that's a release connector. So that means again, if you are not pressing the button, you want it to be released, meaning you've, you know, you've pressed the button, you obviously want the thing to be open, you want it to be locked. If you've not pressed the button, you want the thing to be unlocked, so it can slide back into its position. So both of these latches work differently. This one works on the basis that it's unlocked, or rather that it's you're releasing it when you press this, whereas this one works on the basis that you are locking it when it's pressed. Anyways, this is the basic framework for this part here. Of course, this hatch lock state we don't really need it, but we, we'll see if we maybe end up using it because it's going to tell us whether or not things are sealed up. And if things aren't sealed, then maybe there's going to be something that we need it to do, such as apply more vertical motion to, until it is physically locked in place. Now we get to the fun part because this was all very simple and straightforward. So first things first, our vertical sliders. What we know is when we press this button, we're going to need the vertical sliders to go down. When we don't press the button, we want the vertical sliders to go up, but we don't want them to go up and down forever. So that's one thing to note. And secondly, we want to make sure that we get enough motion out of them that the thing has moved. Now we have to go back into 
the ship itself and gain an understanding of the position that this thing's in. So you could see here that this slider is pointed in the positive direction downward. So actually, I don't usually work that way, but I did it here and I'm not even going to bother changing it. So it's positive in the downward direction, meaning when you actually press the toggle hatch button, you want this to be moving down at a positive rate. So you'll have your speed, which I like to always put as a uh, this property slider. So this will be our slider speed. And, and we'll call it vertical because we may have a different speed for the horizontal. And it'll be between 1 and 0 0.1 here. And then, of course, our rounding will be 0.1. That's fine. And it'll be starting at a value of 0.5. That gives us kind of a good little range. Now, of course, you can use a numerical switch box, but since we want it to be kind of activated and not activated, I'd rather prefer to use an SR latch to a numerical switch box. And I'll explain that here in a second. So pretty much what we know is when this thing is on, we want it to move down. So we now have it moving down when it is on. Of course, we don't want this to be on indefinitely. Even though this would work, you're going to be draining a lot of power because your little motor in your slider is going to constantly be pushing the thing in the downward direction. And then once it's off, of course, if you put this to be the positive, it would be constantly pushing it in the upward direction. So you don't exactly want this. What you want is when you toggle your open latch, you'll want to have a toggle to push, or at least that's what I like to do. And then the toggle to push will go to the set button here or set feature. Of course, if this is not toggled, then you want it to reset it. So that kind of is a starting bit here. And also you, what you will want to have to reset it is a countdown, which could be done in a few ways. It could be done with a capacitor, to be honest, if it's not long enough, like our discharge time here could be 10 seconds, which honestly is probably enough. So you don't actually have to put a regular timer. So you can just have your uh, discharge time be like two seconds. So we'll have a simple OR function go into here and go into here. So when this button is pressed, we will have this thing go down. Now we may not even need the SR latch because of our capacitor, to be honest. We can go ahead and put our capacitor here instead of our pulse, because what's going to happen here is as you toggle this button, the capacitor charges up and then it stops discharging after a certain time. So really, this function here may work enough, right? You press this down, this goes down, and it stays. So then in the not case, you'll want to have the opposite thing. In the not case, you'll want to also have the same type of thing. In this case, we're not going to have vertical slider speed. We're just going to have a simple function that we could press negative X on. So negative X, because now it's moving in the negative direction. So you want the same speed only applied when the thing is on. And you want the knot to have a capacitor that discharges it for two seconds. And then you want to have a simple addition going to your vertical slider. So whether you're doing this or this, they'll go to your their vertical sliders and they'll never be the same ones. So you'll always either have this or that. So that's why you could use the addition function. So to test out what we just created here, I'm going to put a toggle button, I'm going to make this toggle button on the toggle open hatch, give it power it doesn't really matter from where right now. And then we can go and attach these things. So open hatch lock slider, that's not the one we need. What we do need is these, we've already connected them. And here we have our vertical sliders. So we got one vertical slider here and one vertical slider there. Of course, the one on top is the horizontal slider. This one, we didn't connect it yet. I could connect it now because we're gonna use it later on. And if we make sure everything has power and then we can spawn it in and go take a look exactly at what this does. 
So right now you could see that if we go to the door edge panel, it actually doesn't say if it's locked or not. But if we press this, it dropped down. So it gave it a bit of a delay, which was weird. Interesting. So there's a bit of a delay that could be because of the use of this um, function that I'm using here, the discharge. I'll try it with the vertical speed all the way up and actually before we do that what I want to do is add a little indicator here just to tell us whether or not it's locked because I want to see and make sure that as soon as I press the button that it no longer becomes locked now this is hatch lock and this is seal state so there we have it so when I jump on the ship now it should automatically be on that little light should be on and it is so that is good so there's a bit of a delay here which is interesting and that may be what's causing this little lag so this is not a good system and most likely it's because of well let's see toggle open hatch not hatch lock and I know why. It's because while I did attach our vertical sliders here, I also have two more vertical sliders on this part and I have two more horizontal sliders on this part too. Now, it really has to be working properly. What was happening is previously the uh, ship was trying to push it down and two of them were not having it. So this should now drop down quite smoothly on both on all sides and likewise it should return on all sides now why is it not happening instantaneously that is kind of the next question here so now I just bypassed the capacitor system and you can see it works instantaneously so it is something to do with the capacitors that I've been using here and if we take a quick look at the actual microcontroller Right now, I bypass them, meaning I'm not using the capacitor at all. But it worked instantaneously, and actually that was too fast of a value for sure. So I don't like that fast speed. But now it is the capacitor that is causing this problem. So we'll go to using a timer instead. And the way the timer will work is when, instead of the capacitor, so this will toggle the timer, and the timer will go to this um, switch box and it'll be on as long as we want it to be on and likewise when it's not pressed again instead of the capacitor we'll put the timer in and what I like to do is also give us as much flexibility so vertical slider time and it'll this time be in terms of uh, 0.25 seconds inter second intervals up to a maximum of let's say three seconds a minimum of one second and let's start us off at two seconds I mean even if this is 0 0.5 to be honest and this can be all the way up to like five seconds or so even 10 doesn't really matter anyway vertical slider time and this will now attach to this and this will attach to this so no matter what if we press these things it will be active and then it will no longer be active so we could try this function out and I'll even put a dial because now I want to understand exactly what mo the motors are doing. So here we have our vertical sliders. I want this to actually tell us and that will be kind of a little diagnostic tool itself. Let's spawn that in and take a look at what is happening. So it's locked. You press that and it stops. So that worked pro properly. If I remove it, and it stops. So that seems to be working a good amount of time, even for the speed. It like gives it a solid time to move and then it stops. So that is good. What I also did do, I didn't mention, I put here a um, constant on. I just disconnected all of the electric connectors because I didn't want any phantom physics holding this thing up. I want to see that it does work properly right away. Okay, so we've done the first part of the problem here, and that is to have the vertical sliders move up and down. Now, we got to get the horizontal sliders to do the same thing, 
And please note that you could also use this microcontroller for a van sliding door, right? You pop the door out and then you slide it down. So the popping of the door out is in essence what we're doing here with the vertical sliders. With the horizontal sliders, what I could do is have a timer that activates and on once this timer finishes, or I could just stagger it as such. In, in sense, whatever this number is here, we just add that to our timer that we have going. So we press this toggle hatch open button and it'll start this timer and we have the not button here as well. So what we do is we have the horizontal slider time and we're gonna have the horizontal slider speed. And with this now, what I'm just gonna do is add, actually no, that won't work because these functions are counting down the time that it is on. So we actually still do have to have that. Of course, you could use this time in a sense and make it start then, which what I'm saying is this. So here we have this timer, outputs an on signal when the time once the timer reaches its duration. So it's afterwards. So this timer here is a good one to use for this. So in essence, whatever my vertical slider time is, this one is going to be how long this waits until then activating this sequence. And the timer will start at the same time we press this button and then it'll be on as soon as the vertical slider route has ended. So now that this route has ended, this is now active and it's on for, we'll have it on for 10 seconds here just because it is much more of a movement. And then the same type of thing happens. Now for the way back, we'll have to reverse it because we have to make sure that the um, horizontal slider moves in first and then after that it moves up. So the closing function won't work properly, but let's make sure that the um, opening process does work. So we press the button, it goes down and then it's supposed to slide. Now, of course, it seemed that it hit something. Not quite sure what it hit or if it didn't make its full way down. Yeah, you can see it didn't make its full way down. So that means something is stopping it from moving all the way. I'll have to do a little bit of digging to understand what exactly that is. I did get it open, but it took a couple tries of this button, so that means it's not really working too too well or it's very stable at all. So I do need to make sure that I understand what is causing that kind of uh, issue. Now it could also be that I just have to increase the power or ratio on the downward movement, but I'll see what I get. I did some rejigging and let's see what happens. So it does drop quite fast here and then it slides. And as you can see, it's sliding down and eventually it will come into the connector there. And at that point, this is fully open up here. If we go back up top side and we press the button off, seems to be stuck in place which is no good and that very well could be because this thing has failed to release it as you can see here so what I have to do is actually plug in that lock release on both of them and that should do the trick now do I like that it opens so fast like abruptly not really but at the same time it is sometimes good to kind of jolt the system like that because if there is any phantom physics or if it's not perfectly aligned, it'll help it out a little bit. So now that that is fully open, if we press this, you can see that it starts to close and ideally it'll close fully after it, you know, gets to the end here. And soon here, it should push up. There we go. It did get caught on it a little bit, you can kind of see, but it did end up opening. Now, if you do have an issue like this, see that did not work. So now you have to press this and try again, but eventually it does open up. Now note, if you do close it, you will have to wait the full 
15 seconds as if it did make a full uh, motion and opened opened up and then closed so you do have those timers that go regardless and it shuts so if you do end up kind of glitching it out a little bit you can just press the button it should end up working there may be a better s solution i'm sure there is but i think for the time being this is a-okay now i don't know why we're experiencing this phantom physics pushing us off to one side that i really don't like um but regardless the system here is working as far as the phantom physics go i'll see if i can correct them so that very well could be these ones down here or something else trying to connect to something i did not actually limit these ones back here so they may be experiencing phantom physics for example these ones so with this microcontroller now operational we don't need any of this stuff and even this we're going to do later on but what i need to connect is the toggle open hatch so here we have these two buttons one of them being open the cargo hatch here and what I might do is add a second button that does the same thing just because it is useful to be able to open it for example from the bridge itself but for now I'll make it down here and this is kind of the main control center for the operations when it comes to this uh, the hatch and loading system so that is ready to go for the time being next up what we can do is all these connectors the configuration of the connectors and interesting enough all of these have to be released once this is pressed so that actually will come into play as well uh, I just don't know if I want to add it here as a connector point or whether they're better off being on a separate or system because each one of these each uh, configuration of four connectors whether whichever side you've chosen is going to be on its own circuit so what i'm probably going to have to do is adjust that microcontroller to have these automatically turn off once we are uh activated once we've activated this microcontroller down here i have a microcontroller for this control panel here and i'm just going to go ahead and plug it in there's going to be one for each of the bays that's what I called them. So this is bay one, this is bay two, bay three is this one, and bay four is the furthest one. So you'll probably want to fill bay four first, then bay three, then you move on to the top deck ones. So for now, we're just going to do one at a time. Now, I did make a very useful microcontroller that you're going to see here in a second, but pretty much what this does is it will make sure that you are using the right uh, connectors on it and it is mutually exclusive which is nice so if you have the left and right bay on you cannot have the middle one on if you have the middle one on you cannot select left or right and it just makes sure that you can end up with or tries to prevent as much phantom physics as possible and odd connections now we'll have the hatch open attached here so once you press open hatch it will automatically feed us to there so that actually has to go to this button here so open hatch active open hatch and then here we have left so they're going to start off with this uh, bay on the very uh, top side here and actually this one doesn't matter if the bay is open or not or the door is open but anyways we are doing left so this is left this is left and then this is left and this is left so these are the controllers that go for this region then for the middle one it is this one this one and over here it is this and this and then for the right side we'll do the same thing and i'm going to do this for all of them but i'm not going to show the video for all of them actually i did mess up it's this and this these two are right and then this is actually part of the middle controller so i do have to go and redo the middle controller here that you can see i've attached to these two points and then it should also be attached to these two points here and here so we now have the blue ones all selected as the middle if I go back here and take a look, 
So middle will be properly selected. This is left and this is right. So that now all makes sense. I'm just going to add one property toggle, call it disable when door open. So when you have the hatch open and when this is on to be disabled when the hatch is open. So you get both of these things. Then what we'll do is we'll have it such that these are automatically released. Now, the way that the electrical connectors work is you have to have them on to be released. So that way, when these when this and this happens, then all of these here, all of them are going to in fact be on. So we're going to have a bunch of or functions or we'll have three or functions connected to their respective um, position of the hatches or of the uh, uh, container connectors. So this one here, this one here, this one here, and likewise, any of these, these will now be disabled. For bay two, I'm just gonna change the code real fast here. But in addition to that, the code being changed for bay two, bay two definitely is being disabled when doors are open. That's this one here. So that one is a must. Then we have down here bay three, and we'll just quickly change the coding to say bay three. And last but not least, we're going to adjust Bay 4. And once I'm done this, I'm going to go and run and take a look to make sure that all these displays work properly and correctly identify which of the bays are in use. Currently, the systems are working. So you can see Bay 1, 2, and then 3 and 4. So if we go ahead and select here the middle, you see you cannot press left or right. But of course, this thing now had moved and locked it in. So this is really saying that it is connected true because it's not released false, whereas this is released true. So we ended up connecting on our little uh, crane slider mechanism. If I disconnect it, that should now be released. So this one here says released true and this one here says released true. And that works for all of these systems, including on the top. Now you can never have them all selected. It just doesn't work. You could have left and right, of course, or you can have none of them selected or middle, but then you can't select the others. So it's a nice system. Of course, even with the display off, it stays, you know, selected. So you are able to have a quite nice little um, arrangement that is protected in terms of the uh like you you won't, you shouldn't get phantom physics because once you put your container on one of them and connect them the other ones are on are not are not activated of course we get a nice open air skylight here and that's perfect for dropping in containers that's all we're going to go through in this video stay tuned for the next video where we are going to do the gantry crane as well as the inner sort of uh, X-braced uh, connection that will move around the containers within the hold of the ship. So thank you all for watching. Stay tuned for more content, more creations, and as always, happy stromerixing, everyone.